Hello and welcome to this video. You join me today at the Catrum and Warningham Burial Ground in Surrey, England. This burial ground is a little unusual in that it actually is operated by the local district council, but it sits on land at the bottom end of the churchyard of St Mary's at Catrum on the Hill. And regular viewers to my YouTube channel may recall that I've made several videos recently uh, relating to St Mary's, uh, including one about the ancient church of St Lawrence that sits directly opposite St Mary's. During the making of those recent films, I came through the burial ground here, uh, which has a number of graves relating to the Great War and World War II, and also relating to the barracks that used to be nearby. So there are a number of graves here that are looked after by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. And those graves tend to have generally a uniform design, such as one that you can see here. And there's one you can see a little way just behind it, and one to the right there. They vary obviously by emblem and name, etc. But the shape tends to be generally uniform. What really struck me recently when I came here was this grave just over here which again you can see immediately is a Commonwealth War Grave stone but it has a substantial border around it and when I look more closely something else struck me the gravestone says that this is the grave of Sergeant R.J. Kemp of the Royal Army Service Corps, 14th of January 1919, age 27. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. And what really jumped out at me was, first of all, that this has got an additional border with a similar inscription on this edge, and that this is somebody who died whilst in the military just two months after the armistice at the end of World War One, So I decided to try and find out a little bit more about him. And what I uncovered was quite a poignant story, which I'd like to share with you. I'm pleased to say that my research brought up quite a bit of information about Robert Kemp, including this Graves registration report form from 1920. Robert Kemp's entry can be seen second from bottom. Robert John Kemp was born in 1891 and was actually baptised in St Mary's Church. He married his wife Florence in 1913 and they went on to have three children. On the outbreak of World War I, Robert made three unsuccessful attempts to join the military. He was turned down on each occasion because of poor eyesight due to an accident that occurred whilst he was an apprentice. On his fourth attempt in 1915, he was finally accepted into the Royal Army Service Corps for home duties and based at Camberwell. This enabled him to frequently return home to Catrum when not on duty. Less than a mile from his final resting place, Robert Kemp's house still stands in this row of late Victorian houses. On the night of the 14th of January 1919, Robert travelled to Victoria Docks in London to visit a friend in the Navy. Somehow, in what appears to have been a combination of the darkness, bad weather and his poor eyesight, he fell into the water. His cries for help were heard, but sadly he drowned, an inquest later recording a verdict of accidental death. It was a sad end for a man who had overcome his disabilities in order to serve his country for over three years. That, then, is the story of Robert Kemp. But we are left with one mystery. Why the wide border around the grave? So far as I'm aware, Commonwealth war graves were only ever dug for the servicemen concerned. There was no provision made for other family members to be buried with them later, and they would not have provided such a curbstone. Also, so far as I'm aware, graves in this particular burial ground have never been reused. It's a bit of a mystery, but I have one working theory. It's possible that Robert's widow, Florence, reserved the grave next to her husband. She may have been the one responsible for the additional border, 
with the intention of her name being added to it later, and herself laid to rest next to her husband. So far as I know, no one ever was buried next to Robert Kemp. Perhaps Florence was buried in the end elsewhere. I don't know. It's only a theory. And if anyone does have any additional information, do please leave a comment. It would be nice to know. Of all the words that Florence could have chosen to have inscribed on the bottom of Robert's gravestone, I think it's quite telling, given the nature of his death, that she chose the last two lines from Alfred Lord Tennyson's famous poem, Crossing the Bar, with its obvious seafaring connotations. So let's finish with those words. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me, and may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our bourne of time and place the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the notification bell for more.